Hello and welcome to Inside Home Brewing. I'm Jay Thomas and this is a uh, strong bitter beer I brewed up a while back for a uh, just to uh, I did this to test the theory on whether or not secondary is needed so what I did with this beer this is uh this one was uh, primary only for 14 days with a cold crash of three days in bottle. Then I had another batch, a split batch, everything was exactly the same, which I'm gonna be doing today. But uh, on the second batch, it was uh, 14 days primary also, but then I changed it over to a secondary, gave it another 14 days with also three days cold crash. What I did is uh, then bottled it and then uh, it's gone off to a competition I'm going to send it off next week and it'll be a few more weeks till uh, we get the results. I want to test out and see which beer scores a little better. And I'm also going to do that with today's beer, which is going to be a, uh, a cream ale. And the uh, here's the list of ingredients. Take a taste of this first. This one was primary only. It's a little, got a little bit of a chill haze to it. Pretty good beer though. Anyway, so this one, this batch today, it's a cream ale, pretty easy one to make. It's gonna be five pounds American Pale two row, four pounds American Pale, or uh, let me get this right. Five pounds American Pale six row, four pounds American Pale two row, two pounds of flaked corn and one half pound of flaked barley. I'm going with a, a ounce and a half of uh, Liberty Hops for a full 60 minute boil. Also a half ounce of uh, Liberty Hops, last 10 minutes of boil. The uh, I've got a yeast starter chugging away back there. That's the, uh, let me see what that was. It's the Imperial Yeast uh, G06 uh, Dieter. It's, a, it's actually a Kolsch style of yeast. We're uh, gonna ferment that a little cool at about 60, 465 degrees and uh, let that go and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split that again into uh, two three gallon fermenters everything equal you'll see how I get this all equaled out but uh, I'm gonna go a full 28 days on both of them but one of them will be uh, transferred over to secondary after 14 days and then uh, I'm gonna give them both a cold crash for the last three days of fermentation bottle them both on the same day or maybe one will be a day later but uh, anyway and then those are gonna also go off to a different competition and uh, see what the judges put those at still what like I said it's still waiting on the uh, results of test number one this one's gonna be a little bit different and a different type of beer going to uh, a totally different of course to a totally different competition anyway I've got the uh, strike water over here I did a little bit of an adjustment what I'm gonna do is uh, gonna dough in at uh, <clears throat> let me see 14.25 quarts that puts us at a 1.25 to 1 ratio we're gonna do in at 131 degrees have a rest for 15 minutes of 122 degrees then I'm gonna raise the temperature up to about 150 degrees by adding seven and a half quarts of uh, boiling hot water leave that sit for up to 60 minutes I'll check it and uh, and see where it's at see if it uh, converts faster than that it probably will I'm also I'm gonna uh, check the pH on this after it's uh, set for its first 15 minutes get it stirred up real good and uh, after I make the uh, second addition I'll check the pH and it may need to uh, adjust it a little higher a little lower we'll see I have uh, I have a few things I can adjust it with but anyway we're ready to rock and I'll get the heat started and uh, get going on this Oh yeah. So I got the uh, strike water up to temperature. Just uh, start the dough in process. So I got all the uh, strike water added. Give it a stir. Make sure there's no uh, chunks in there. Everything's saturated throughout. And then I'll take a temperature reading and cover it up set the timer it's only going to be 15 minutes at this temperature that should work I 
want it around a 122 degrees. Let's see what happens here. Maybe a little hot. I kind of spaced out and got the, uh, not too bad. Kind of spaced out and let that sit a little too long. 124. So about 124 degrees I can live with that. So just uh, get that covered up. And in the meantime, I'll heat up the uh, water to get that boiling. So it's been just over uh, 15 minutes on that first rest. Getting this, uh, adding more water, get, raise the temperature. We're looking for about 150 degrees. I checked the pH and it was dead on at uh, 5.2. And uh, I'm going to have to check it again with the uh, addition of the uh, spring water. It's, it may change it a little bit. We'll uh, check the temperature, let it rest a little bit, and check the pH and adjust if needed. So I got that all stirred in there. We'll uh, see what the temperature is here now. Looking for right around 150. Slowly creeping up, looking pretty good. There's 150. Just a hair over 150. About 151. About 151, that works for me. I'm liking that. Right around, uh, Two to one uh, water and uh, grain ratio now. So uh, I'll get this covered back up. Start the timer for uh, like 60 minutes, but I'll probably check it a little bit before. I'm going to check the uh, pH here in a few, and then I'll uh, check for uh, starch conversion after that. So I'll uh, give a check on the uh, pH. Put it off, turn it back on, restart. There we go. I usually want it 5.2 to 5.4. It was at 5.2. I did add some uh, more water, boiling water, to uh, raise the temperature. And looking good though, still at uh, 5.2. I'm liking that. I'm going to leave that alone and I'll check the. Uh, conversion here after a little while. So it's uh, been just over a half hour. We'll see if we've gotten a, a uh, conversion yet. Give it a nice stir. And I'm going to pull a sample to uh, check the uh, conversion. I like the color of that. Take a test of that. So if it turns a uh, black or dark purple, it's not fully converted. It's been at a proper pH, so it should be converted. But we'll check it out. That looks good to me. It didn't turn black or uh, dark purple, like I said. So, uh, yeah, it's all converted. That's a that's about a done deal there. So, anyway, we'll just uh, start sparging it here in a few. So, I'll just... Uh, oops. Start draining that uh, wort out of there. As the uh, sparge water is heating up. I'm kind of unsure about the... Uh, hot side wort aeration, hot side aeration on the wort, but uh, try to keep that to a minimum. Just have it run down the side where it's not splashing in there. That should work. So that quit running. Just uh, open up the valve and uh, start sparging it.
Should be coming out now. There we go. You can hear it running down through the grains. That's a good thing. Evenly distributed. See some bubbles coming up. So now that's pretty full. It's an eight gallon brew pot. I don't know if you can see that line on there. There's the eight gallon line. We're at just over seven and a half gallons. Trying to make six gallons out of an eight gallon brew kettle is pretty tough. And hopefully, fingers crossed, no boil overs. Keep the wife happy and not boil over onto the stove. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Got the heat cranked up and uh, going to start the boil here in a few minutes. So it's up to a boil and I just uh, added the hops. Let that boil for 50 minutes and uh, add the uh, rest of the hops along with the uh, Whirlflak tablet and the beer nutrient. I did take a little bit of the uh, beer out of there, which I'll add back later if needed, but uh, the volume was too high, it would have boiled over. It came close, but uh, everything's looking good so far. So the alarm just went off about a minute ago, so it's time to uh, add the, uh, I have the Whirlflak tablet and the yeast nutrient dissolved in a little bit of water in here. Just uh, dump that right in. And then add the, uh, the final hop addition. And uh, set the timer, another 10 minutes, we're good to go. So the alarm's about to go off. I've got everything ready. It's going to run through the, uh, out of here, through the work chiller and into here. I'm going to run it through the uh, work chiller two times. It's going to go into here, then back into here, then into the uh, fermenters, equal, totally equally, after I pitch the yeast the second time it gets cooled off. I'm going to run it through the uh, work chiller two times just so I make sure it's closer to 65 degrees, other than uh, being in the uh, high 70s, what it usually is. We're going to give this a try and see what happens and uh, I want it as close to uh, ferment temperature as possible with this uh, coal yeast. We'll see what happens. Anyway, we're about ready to rock. So the alarm just went off. I'll uh, shut off the heat and uh, open up that valve. Open up the bottom valve. Let this run through. It's going to take a minute for it to uh, get through the chiller. There we go. So I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to run it through here twice. It's going to be a little too warm for this yeast. I want to try to have the yeast and the, uh, have the uh, wort beer close to ferment t temperature as possible instead of uh, cooling it off just to see if there's any difference. So it uh, came out right at uh, six gallons. So now what I'm going to do is uh, crank up the oxygen and add the yeast. So I'll just uh, get that dumped in there. First I have to take out that magnet. So now I'm going to run the beer through here in uh, equal increments of one gallon a piece just to try to make everything as equal as possible. Here we go. Getting close. Give that just a little more. Get that to the one gallon line. I'll shut this off. And then uh, get that other one filled up. And while that's running through, I'll stop it for a second. 
and uh, take a sample for an original gravity reading. There we go. So that's uh, one is filled up to the uh, one gallon line. I'll shut that off. First one seems to have a little more trobe in it, but uh, we'll see what happens. I'll uh, give it a stir now and uh, start filling up the uh, first one again. I'll just uh, give this another stir. And continue the same process, put a gallon in each one, give it a stir, give it a gallon in each one, until they're both full. There we go. So I have them both filled up equally, just above the uh, three gallon line. So uh, we'll go from there and uh, everything should be equal. The yeast should be equal. Everything's the same. They both look pretty much the same. And uh, I'll just cap them off, put a uh, blow off tube on them and put them in the ferment chamber now. So there we go. That turned SS1. That's going to be single stage fermentation, 28 full days. Got the uh, blow off tube. Everything looks rather equal to the other one SS2 the only difference is I have the uh, the uh, the uh, thermal well inside this one and the probe to uh, take the temperature they should be exactly the same pretty much the level on top is real even got the blow off tubes attached Come down into here, and uh, we're just going to leave that alone. I'll go take a gravity reading, clean up my mess, and uh, I'll see you in a couple weeks when uh, when I transfer this over to uh, secondary. So it's the next day. It's working real good. I already uh, emptied out the blow-off jar one time, but they seem uh, rather even as far as the level and the amount of blow off is going. So it's uh, working out the way I wanted it to. Had the uh, temperature probe inside the thing and it's showing 63.6 uh, .6 degrees. I have it set at 64. Goes right inside of there. So that's the interior of that beer. Should be pretty much exactly the same for the other beer. So all is well. I'll just uh, leave that alone, switch out the uh, the uh, to a regular airlock if I have room There's not much room there I may have to just leave the blow off tube on there until it goes into secondary or till I get one of these bottled and moved out of the way anyway I can just leave those alone now for a while and uh, check on them here in a couple weeks so we're at 14 days now I you can see I uh, switched that out and put a regular uh, took the blow off tube out put different tube on there and have a uh, regular ferment locks on there. I did a uh, de-rest for three days. I brought the temperature up to uh, 68 degrees, left it for a few days, and now I dropped the temperature back down to it's at, uh, I said it at 55, we're at 54.3. So I'm gonna uh, pull both of these out of here now. One of them, the uh, SS2, will go into a uh, secondary. I have that, uh, getting sanitized right now. The other one I'm just going to pull out and uh, take a gravity reading off of it only and uh, put a different top on there and a different airlock. And then I'm just going to uh, set that into the uh, other ferment chamber at 38 degrees. This one will be transferred and put into a, uh, the also put into the uh, other ferment chamber. It's going to sit at 38 degrees. Both of them will be there for a uh, 14, 14 days until I bottle them. So I'll get that transferred over here in just a few minutes. I'll get the uh, gravity reading on uh, on SS1. I like the color for a cream. 
cream ale, it's crystal clear. It's really nice. Kind of hard to tell with all the bubbles in there, but uh, there we go. Wow. 1.008. So now I'm going to uh, sample and uh, taste that. Wow, that's really, that's a summertime beer there. You can slam those down all day long. Maybe a little light bodied for a cream ale, but that's pretty good. I'll take a, uh, I'll get that one uh, switched over into a secondary and uh, take a gravity reading. It should be exactly the same. We'll see what happens. So I got this all ready to go. I'm going to uh, fill up. I'm going to fill up the. Uh, I got a Spidel fermenter. I've never used it before. Five gallon one. But uh, I'm going to fill this up with uh, CO2. up with uh, CO2 and uh, then transfer the beer into that. I have no idea. So, uh, I probably filled it up. Keep the top on there. And then I'll just get the siphon going here in a sec. So I'll get this popped off of here. Siphon going. Pretty clear. I can see down inside there. Right where that hose is. Going to take a sample. It should be the exact same reading as uh, that last one. And try to quietly siphon this into here. Trying to keep the CO2 in there. We'll just cover that up. Nice and clear beer. Got the hose down towards the bottom. Try not to suck up too much yeast. And a gentle siphon inside there. Try not to oxidize it. Just cover that up and uh, let that roll and take a sample or, uh, with that sample. I'll get a gravity reading on this. The last one, uh, MT1, was uh, 1.008, I believe. This should be the same. I'll check it out right now. Let's see what this says. one point 1.008. We're identical. So, the blow-off was identical. The... Uh, Everything was identical. Ending gravity, identical. Taste, I would say identical. It's really good. Like I said, you slam those down all summer. That's a good beer. We'll just get this put away here in a couple minutes. And wait another two weeks and bottle it. So now it's been uh, two weeks. I'm uh, about to bottle uh, SS number two, SS Shotgun Shack number two. This is the one that was in uh, primary plus secondary. It's in the secondary now. Got the uh, bottling bucket ready to go. I got my uh, corn sugar weighed out. We're using uh, just over three ounces of uh, corn sugar for this uh, three gallon batch. Gonna uh, dump that in here. 
get that boiling, got the bottle caps ready to go. And uh, I've never used this uh, this uh, Spidel fermenter before. And uh, just for the integrity and to know what I'm doing, I'm going I'm not going to use this spout to drain that out. I'm just going to uh, siphon it out the top, just like I will with the uh, carboy on the uh, SS1 um, shotgun shack number one that's been in the uh, fermenter now for a total of uh, 28 days. So I'll get this uh, siphoned out of here into the bottling bucket and uh, bottled up. And then the plan is to uh, bottle SS1 today also, but it may happen tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Here we go. So I'll take my uh, gravity reading. Like I said, it should be exactly the same, 1.008. See what it says. Four six eight. Yeah, one point zero zero eight. Take a taste of it. This is the uh, one in secondary. It smells good. It's cool. It's been at uh, thirty eight degrees. It warmed up a little bit sitting in the house. Not carbonated. Real smooth. Got a little, hmm, I don't know. That's pretty good. That might be from the corn or something, but, uh, oh, that's, that's really good. Oh, yeah, I like that. That should be nice. Get this bottled up here we'll be good to go so i ended up with a, a total of 27 bottles out of ss number two that'd be the uh, shotgun shack primary plus secondary i have the four bottles set aside for uh, competition and i'll pick out which ones i want to use and uh, send to the competition i'm just going to uh, clean out my mess now take the bottling bucket get that cleaned out and uh, sanitize again along with the hose and stuff and i'll uh bring the uh, SS number one primary only out here to uh, get that siphoned over and bottle get the bottling done today. So I have uh, SS one shotgun shack one ready to be bottled and I got the, all my bottles ready to go. I have the uh, corn sugar weighed out exactly the same as the last batch so they they should be very close to uh, the same volume. And uh, gonna boil up the bottle caps. I have the uh, bottling bucket. It's uh, getting sanitized right now. We'll get that out here in just a minute and uh, get this done. So uh, SS number one, get that transferred into the uh, bottling bucket. And I will take a uh, gravity reading off this one also. It should be the same. transfer into the bottling bucket. So now I'll take a uh, gravity reading of this one. should be 1.008 as it was before and take a taste of course. Got some bubbles in there hard to see but it uh, looks like it uh, hasn't moved 1.008. Tastes like the last one. It's real smooth. Maybe a little corn. Hard to describe, but uh, real smooth, real good. Once that's carbonated, it should be not real nice. Yeah, that's good. We'll 
we'll see what happens when those go to uh, competition. So I ended up with uh, 28 bottles on this one. The last one was uh, 27. I have four set aside for competition. And here in a couple weeks, I'm going to test out each one and see which one I like best. But what's most important is uh, they're going both to uh, different competitions and see what the judges think. SS number one or SS number two. Primary only or primary plus secondary. We'll see what happens. So I have these uh, both boxed up and ready to go. Uh, one of them is going to a contest up in uh, Cheyenne. It's called uh, Eight Seconds of Froth. We're uh, going to drop that off locally at uh, Tom's Brew Shop here in Lakewood, Colorado. And uh, the other one I'm going to ship off to uh, Missouri, Ozark, Missouri. Uh, that one's called uh, Open Season at the Zoo. And they're both on the same day. They're both going to be on the uh, 28th of uh, April. So we'll see what, uh, we'll get the results at about the same time and see which one scores better. So now, in the meantime, I'm going to try out this one. This is the uh, Shotgun Shack number one, primary fermentation only. See how this does. Pretty nice, pretty clear. This a slight, slight, slight haze. It's it's pretty pretty clear though. Mmm, can smell the kind of malty, but corn. Can smell the corn. Oh, yeah. Taste that corn. A little bit of little maltiness, a little corn flavor to it. No, quite a, quite a bit of corn. That's good. You really drink that down on a hot summer day. God, I like that. That's good. That's good beer. We'll see how it does in the. Uh, competition and uh, see which one scores better primary only or primary plus secondary see what happens that's good so I got the uh, results back from the uh, the two competitions I sent uh, shock and check one and shock and check number two off here is uh SS number one, this was the one that was uh, primary only, 28 days, then bottled. This beer, it's pretty good. This beer went off to uh, a competition in Missouri. It was on the same day as the uh, other competition that the uh, number two went to up in uh, Cheyenne. Okay, here we go. We got uh, first judge, uh, Kristen B. Now, there's the funny thing. On the sheet here, it shows, you can see that, shows a uh, beer judge certification program rank and status. Nothing's marked there. Non beer judge certification. Nothing's marked there, and it says other, non, <laughs> non-beer judge certification program. So this, Kristen B, is not certified. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what made her uh, a beer judge, but uh, maybe she's the girlfriend of the guy that owns the uh, homebrew shop. Anyway, this Kristen B gave me the best score of all of them. So, uh, okay, here we go. Kristen B. A non-judge okay on uh, bottle inspection silver bottle cap appropriate size okay aroma she gave me seven seven out of twelve banana forward smell a little bit yeah low to medium malty smell yes I, I can agree with that appearance three out of three hazy gold appearance good head retention 
you know, somewhat. Flavor, 15 out of 20, low to medium multi characteristics, ban banana bread taste, low hop flavor, somewhat sweet. It's pretty right on that. Okay, mouthfeel, 4 out of 5, smooth, medium mouthfeel, creamy with low to medium warmth. Maybe it says warmth. Low to medium, looks like warmth. Okay, moving right along. Overall impression was, uh, she gave it a 6 out of 10. Let me see what it says. Aroma, appearance, flavor, and mouthfeel are all very pleasing. Beer has a sweet banana taste to it. Malt and hop profiles balance each other out nicely. Beer has overly, overly estery characters. It's a little, it is a little fruity. It's kind of banana-like. Almost like a almost Hefweizen-ish. But anyway, her total score came to uh, 35 out of 50. Uh, moving right along to the next guy here is a uh, Caleb Buck. He is a certified he is uh, his rank and status with the Beer Judge Certification Program is certified. He also, his non-Beer Judge Certification Program qualifications, he's also been in uh, sensory training. And then going down here, it says uh, estuary. Excuse me, circled fruits. Okay, this guy's writing is harder to read. Okay, slightly over, slightly, silver cap, slightly low fill. There's no points on that anyhow. Okay, aroma, he gave it a 6 out of 10. Beneath medium banana and bubblegum low low clean sweet something no detectable hops balance towards malt smells like a good Hefweizen something are uh, and in a something inappropriate for style esters are Something and inappro inappropriate for style. Okay, that was six out of twelve. Then uh, appearance, two out of three. Pale yellow with slight something tone to it. Slight haze. Low low head of something bubbles that. Persist well. I, I I can't I can't really read his writing. That was a two out of three. Flavor thirteen out of twenty. Uh, medium low, something and sweet malt. Low floral hops, balanced toward malt. Hop bitterness is low. Finish medium dry, as required. Aftertaste has a floral something quality fermentation shows low fermentation shows low esters maybe I, I i don't know i can't really read his writing that was 13 out of 20. mouthfeel four out of five medium body with uh medium high carbonation no alcohol warming no astringency Overall impression was a 7 out of 10. A very good beer that needs some fermentation adjustments to improve score. Uh, excess, uh, I can't tell. Avoid by ensuring pro avoid. Oh, fermentation. Example of something can be avoided by ensuring proper fermentation temperatures are maintained and the something character can be avoided by something beer. It isn't left in primary for extended periods of time. <laughs> okay. That was tw this one was 28 days in uh, primary. So maybe... I had another beer in my last experiment. It went uh, 14 days primary, bottled, bam, off to competition, and that was suggested that it be in primary longer. This one went 28 days, twice as long. 
and uh, this guy is suggesting that it uh, not being left in primary for extended periods of time. There we go. We're going to do another experiment on 20, 21 days and bottle it. And I'll go with my normal uh, putting one into secondary. But anyway, that's another story. Okay, so this guy gave me my total score 32 out of 50. And the other one was 35 out of 50. Gives me a score of 33.5 on the beer that was primary only 28 days. Perhaps primary only 28 days is a little too long. Okay, moving right along. Well, might as well finish this. There we go. This is uh, shotgun check number two. This one went up to a uh, competition in Cheyenne. It's called uh, Eight Seconds of Froth. So this one scored hmm, this one scored final assigned score 32. Okay. So here we go. Uh, this guy here this was primary, 14 days, secondary, 14 days, may have been 15 days, 14 or 15 days in secondary, and then uh, bottled. Okay, a guy named uh, Leo Vitt, he is a certified judge through the uh, BJCP program, and okay, here we go. Uh, he didn't put anything on the bottle inspection on the, on the fill level. Aroma, 8 out of 12, light, peppery aroma, perceived sweetness, could be corn and light hop aroma. Okay, appearance, 3 out of 3, well thank you Leo. And what do we got, darker golden color, okay, slight haze, white head that lasts. Flavor, 10 out of 20, some fruity flavor and some darker malt flavor. Reminds me of a low level quality, excuse me, low level quality Munich malt. Low hop bitterness, there was no uh, Munich malt in there. Anyway, <laughs> low hop bitterness and no hop flavor. Somewhat malty beer finish, very little but some sweetness. That was uh, 10 out of 20. Okay, mouthfeel. I got 4 out of 5 points on that. Light, medium body, average carbonation, a touch heavy for this style. I don't know. Seems okay to me. I like all my beers like this. Overall impression, 6 out of 10. My impression is... Warmer fermentation leading to fruity impression, fruit leading to fruity impressions. Suggest reducing fermentation temp to control. If you did include with some other malt other than pale and adjust, I suggest removing. It could be low amounts of oxidation. Maybe could be because this one was transferred. I think on this uh, other beer, what did he say? He said about the same thing. Lower fermentation temp. It was fermented at a cool temperature, so maybe it's the yeast. Maybe they're both slightly oxidized. I don't know. Moving right along. Okay. That guy gave me, what was it? His score was 31 out of 50. Maybe oxidation and lower the temperature, but it was it was low. I used a uh, I used a uh, Kolsch yeast and fermented it 
kind of cool. I don't remember exactly, but uh, it wasn't like it was sitting in the closet. Okay. But anyhow. So the next judge, uh, Trevor Schilling. He is experienced judge, judge with sensory training. Very good. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, he's, he did mark it down as oxidized. Any one or combination, style one, veneers, cardboard, papery, sure, like aroma. He did mark oxidized. Let me see if this other guy did. He had marked nothing on that. Okay. Anyway, cream ale, a little low on the fill for bottle inspection. Aroma, 8 out of 12, slight. Sweet corn-like aroma, low malt characteristics, low spicy floral hop aroma. It smells more malt and corn. <coughs> Tastes pretty good. <clears throat> Appearance. Two out of three. Color is a little dark. Great clarity, nice soft head. It's, it's pretty clear. It's not bad. Flavor, 12 out of 20. Peppery, maybe it says peppery, I can't really read that. Great hot presence. Malt flavor is a little strong. Corn adds a nice sweet flavor. Slight Pepper flour, paper flour, I something flour. I, I maybe it's flavor. Slight pepper flavor, slight pepper flavor. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> but anyway, okay, that was uh, twelve out of twenty. Mouthfeel four out of five points. Good mouthfeel, moderate to high carbonation. Overall impression is seven out of ten. Not bad. Good beer with nice mouthfeel. Hops were well presented in the beer, but a slightly peppery flavor present. Be sure that Crystal Munich malts are being used very... Be sure that Crystal slash Munich malts are being used very light color. Be sure, be, be sure that no, oh, be sure that no crystal slash Munich malts are being used. I did not use any crystal or Munich malts. Huh, anyway, his final score was uh, 33 out of 50, so I don't know on the whole uh, controversy on... Uh, On whether or not secondary fermentation is needed I don't know we're gonna do another experiment we're going with uh, trying to find a sweet spot with the uh, primary only and looking for a uh, 21 days and gonna uh, make another batch of beer until next time inside home brewing <laughs>